Uh, welcome to another episode of Battlezone TV. Finally got to get my uh, glasses off here. As uh, the last few episodes, I've had to wear glasses. We're live here at the Heritage Days. We've got another episode for you. Axel, how you doing today? I'm doing great, Scrappy. How's it going? Another episode of IW's Battlezone TV about to be underway. We've got some fantastic action here. Doing really good. A little technical difficulties aside, we're going to get things rolling. It let's, gets windy and the paper goes flying. I'm telling you, let's get this thing on the road here. Some action. IWE action. The Saucy Boy. Oh, uh, I had almost rid my memory. Josh of him. Morris is in here. Josh Morris. Hola, hola. Josh Morris is in here. Josh Morris. Hola, hola. Josh Morris I, I mean, is in here. Josh Morris. I'm not. I don't know how this guy survives in this locker room. Josh Morris is in here. Josh I mean, he just gives it to everybody. And he's back here to give it to the fans in Mayo. I'll bet you anything he and 24 Karat Kids just walk through the locker room back to back. I, well, they work in deal. Potentially. I mean, I don't know. I don't know their inner workings, but it just seems like Josh Morris rubs everybody the wrong way. That he does. I wonder if he saw Pun the Psych back there. Uh, yeah, Psych? Josh Morris here giving it to the fans of Mayo. The saucy boy. And I can't believe I'm still saying this phrase. I, I, you know what, Axel? It, it fits you well. I love it. It's Does amazing. It? No. Just kidding. It fits me like I'll a bad tattoo. I'll make it sweet because I'm saucier than the saucy knights. That's, you ain't got nothing on me, Aaliyah. I, I, I'm about to put this little pipsqueak into the ground. It's false count anywhere. So watch out. I might be pinning them on top of your toes, dawg. What a way to start. Now it's obvious all of you men are jealous and all of you women want to be with the saucy dog. Yeah. So bring up the little man. Sauce Boss sure has not yet learned the first thing that comes to Tyler Dean. Is Tyler Dean 101 is that you do not underestimate him based on his size. Well, that's a fact. Um, Tyler Dean is, uh, oh, and he came ready to go. Chair in hand. It's a false count anywhere, so you know the uh, disqualification is not a factor in this one. That's right. And Tyler Dean, smart man, came packing with Alabama's favorite uh, carry concealed weapon. The biggest little man in all of professional wrestling. Tyler Dean. And the, the fans love him. Born. That they do. Taken to the stands. Perhaps that's where he'll get his win. Wouldn't that be a sight? And the kids be loving him. Because, well, they can look him dead in the eye. I feel like you make that joke every show. And it never gets old. But. Once again, don't underestimate it based on his size. Oh, you can't. You can't. And anybody that's watched Battlezone TV knows that. Come on, let's be real. And if you're new to the show, Tyler you're, you're in for. with the best. You are in for a treat because both of these guys are good. Whether you like Tyler Dean or Josh Morris or neither, <laughs> it won't matter because uh, you will get some amazing. Uh, One of the greatest IB Gladiator champions we've had. I mean, a decorated champion is Tyler yeah. Dean. Like, and tag team champion as well with his brother Tyson. Josh took the mic, talked his trash. This rivalry has become increasingly personal over the last few months. And you guys have been back and forth, attacking one another, putting each other down. He's a bigger man, but what do you plan to do, Ty? Josh Morris wants to know why it's personal. I've been fighting for the last six months for a heavyweight title opportunity and you stole that from me. So tonight, 
that gets corrected. Come find out, Joshy. Hey, and Josh Morris is not happy that uh, Tyler Dean's pacing around here with this chair, but hey, man, it, it's kind of the name of the game here. So uh, I, the following contest is scheduled for, and it is Falls Count Anywhere. And, uh, Introducing first, boy, weighing Flexi. in at 199.99 pounds, he is one saucy boy, Josh Morris. That 0.01 pound difference is important. It is. It makes all the difference in the world. Got to have uh, accurate weight weight here. And his opponent. From Treetop Town, weighing in at 185 pounds, he is a Raven Reborn, Tyler Dean! Tyler Deaton tosses the chair to Josh Morris, who just shoves it aside, doesn't think he needs it. Underestimating the lawman. Tyler Deaton, one of the most experienced wrestlers ever to step into an item ring. Slaughter clothesline. And he's just Trap kick. quicker than a hiccup here. Running around with these crazy kicks and sling blades and into the Cazadora to the, oh, and he got dropped. Josh got Morris. Caught by the wheelbarrow. Josh Morris, they may have only uh, met once, but he's done his homework and he uh, saw that coming and cut it off. Trying to finish it with that. I love the uh, mind games, but the arrogance of uh, Josh Morris it, it can be uh, could be a detriment to him here against this uh, the, the young Raven Reborn. It's amazing how many people I see make this mistake with Tyler Dean, underestimating him and trying to play, play take it e taking it easy on him. I have been following Tyler Dean's career for a very long time. And and the thing is, is he he takes a beating and he just keeps coming back. Like so, like how Tyler do you deal Dean with that has mentally? No quit in him. Yeah, how do you deal with that mentally when you put a hurting on this guy and then he just keeps coming back? Uh, that is the one. A great quality from Tyler Dean. Absolutely. And now, oh, monkey flipped him. That was uh, an interesting kind of like knees to the chest while he did that. And that missile, missile drop, drop kick. kick was nasty, as usual, wow. from the saucy boy. Very athletic guy. I mean, like, don't get it twisted, everybody. Yeah. His attitude. Uh, you know, can rub you the wrong way, but he's super athletic. Josh Morris is a great athlete. I see that. It's that he covers that in this saucy, to, to use one of his own words, exterior that just, it's hard to see the athleticism when you're too busy rolling your eyes at everything he has to say. Well, there, there's a part of that, but once again, that's Ow. that's part of the mind games. If he, if he can get you to underestimate him and not see that uh, coming, then he's got the advantage. And I, I kind of like that about him, although I can't really think of a whole lot more. But once again, and giving it to the fans here in Mayo, and they don't, you know, these fans here are pretty, pretty rough and tumble. They're not taking no stuff. No, absolutely not. It's always a pleasure coming here to Mayo, Michigan, here to today's. Let's uh -oh. go to County Fairgrounds. Uh -oh. oh, this does not look good what? for Tyler Dean. Oh. oh, and Tyler slipped out of it. That Shoved he, Josh Morris face first into the corner post. That was the perfect reversal in a perfect time because I have a thing, bad feeling that uh, that was uh, not going to end well for Tyler Dean. But And a jumping tackle. Yeah, that. <laughs> gosh. That wood is just, uh, we say it over and over again, but it, it's super unforgiving here on the stage yes. and on the edge there. And, uh, and the, you know, the fall off, hit the fans. I mean, there's a lot of things that can kind of happen to you outside this ring yeah. here. This is your one show reminder that there is no padding outside the ring here. It is just open, bare wood. And these chops are nasty. And the fans getting free licks in. 
I just, uh, I, I, I'm not sure how I feel about this, uh, Axel. I mean, I know the fans are digging it, but I'm not sure. Absolutely how, are. Oh, what are they, what are, do you gotta pay for this? We should be charging for this. It's like a, it's just everybody over here. Oh, and another one, and another one. Um, it's false count anywhere. There was no. Yeah, but it's it's like it's like three hundred on one. Is it like all the fans? That's versus, Josh's fault. That's probably some truth to that. I should probably. Oh, there you go. That's one way out of it. A little poke to the eyes from the uh, the the saucy one himself. Dropping the forearm on uh, Tyler Dean as he's trying to get away and kind of get his uh, eyes back here. <laughs> um, oh. we, Josh Morris needs to probably needs to focus on his opponent. Spend a little less time exactly in IWE country, so to speak. He needs to get away from the fans and get back into the into this fight with Tyler Dean. And he is with that heavy right hand. He's got Tyler wondering where he's at. This is not Artesia there, Tyler. You're not in your normal home. Tyler Dean. Josh Morris just is just malicious, vicious, and uh, un unflappable Tyler, with the Tyler, back band. up to his feet. Running start through the ropes. Tackle onto the outside. At Suicida. That dark diving clothesline, you're right. I, I don't know how they didn't end up into the third row here. Some stellar weight control. I mean, the, the uh, well, that's that's Tyler Dean, right? Like, he's so good at that high-flying, manipulate-your-body momentum stuff. Hits that sling blade again. Dean back up. Hurricane Rana into oh, the second rope. Guess what we got here? He's all set up. Set up for the pendulum. There it is. Oh, oh no. Once what again. Scary. He caught the pendulum. Once again, Josh Morris ready for a, oh. another one of... Neck breaker into the two. Into the count, but going found a two count. Josh Morris again ready for another one of Tyler Dean's signature maneuvers. Um, just shows you, even though they've only had that one match, that he learned a lot in that one match. So once again, whether you like the Saucy Boy or not, uh, learns quickly, very athletic. And uh, he's, you know, he's, he's he's running with one of IWE's best. Let's be real. Yeah, he is. In, in Tyler Dean. And here we go with the chair again. Somebody's going to get a chair. And it's uh, some evil intentions on the face of uh, Josh Morris here. Oh, an exploder. Oh! Straight out of the chair. He went with that slam. Wow. That power slam. Kicked out, Tyler Lou. Dean kicked out of the out. attempted pin. That's that, that's that resiliency. It's just crazy that he's like the rubber made of human beings, the Tyler Dean here. And it's frustrating. Wow. It is frustrating Josh Morris big time here right now. And he's got to keep his cool because you, you, get, uh, you get out of your own game here. You're going to be in trouble with Tyler Dean. Absolutely. Josh Morris focused maybe a little bit too much on the fans out here in IWE country. Up to the top rope. Hurricane Rana. Oh, onto, onto the, the chair. chair. And it was just a nasty way he came wow. down off of that rope. He it, did not, that was, yeah. it, it just didn't look good at all. The way he contorted and uh, hit the mat. And, and, and just trying to get his... <laughs> Get his limbs to work again. Josh Morris is uh, flailing, just all over the place. And uh, he better Tyler keep Dean it. back up to the top. Raven taking flight, knocks him down. Flying clothesline into the pin. One, two, three. That's it. Tyler Dean, the winner of this victorious. match, a Raven reborn, Tyler. D! Plants Josh Morris right where it started. T.Y. flies high tonight here in Wild. Yeah, the uh, Raven Reborn with another victory. Uh, trying to climb his way back into the title ranks. I'm sure this victory will help that. And uh, Josh Morris is gonna have to uh, go back to the drawing board here and see if he can't uh, 
come up with a better game plan for him for his next outing. And that didn't didn't end well for him. <laughs> this week against Tyler Dean. Congratulations, Tyler Dean, a well-earned victory. Josh Morris gets to go home and look at himself in the mirror and ask himself where he went wrong. Well, it's one of those things, man. You take your eye off the prize even for a second with uh, uh, an experienced, lethal competitor, really, in Tyler Dean. This is the kind of things that could happen to you. And look at all the fans running over there to, uh, uh, he's off camera, to run over there to catch Ty Tyler on his way uh, back to the locker room here in our very unique setting. It's Josh is getting quite the opposite uh, treatment from the fans here. Oh, I'd be worried for Josh's safety trying to get himself back to back to the locker room when there is a selection of fans around in the area on the way between here and there. And man, oh man, no, but I'm gonna tell you what I'm excited about. I'm, I'm excited about what's next. I'm excited about all kinds of things, but I'm also excited about the championship matches we got here and the championship belts you can get at J-Dub Belts. You get a chance, go over to jdubbelts.com and check out some of those amazing uh, IWE replica belts that are available uh, for you. They are beautiful belts there, it's crappy. And so now we have got us one heck of a match coming yep. up here in the main event. Tag Team Championships on the line. Some say champions are born, but we believe champions are forged in the fire of competition. Whether you need a championship for in the ring or out, J Dub Bells makes custom handmade championships for all occasions. Our customer friendly belt levels allow J Dub Belts to provide quality products for any budget. For more information about us, our leather products, or to order your very own custom made championship belt, log on to www.jdubbelts.com Sizing into something completely, I don't even know what to say. The well, one you're looking for is glorious. What happened to the mighty Bojack? He's, he's turned, right there. Uh, he, oh my goodness. He's right there. He's wearing the helmet. That may be why you don't. You know what? He, he probably needs to wear the helmet at this stage. I'm surprised they didn't come in a short bus. What is going on here? Tread the line. Stuntman Mike and the mighty Bojack on their way to the ring. Oh, Stuntman, in all his glory. I, I don't even know what to say. Tag Team Championships are about to be on the line. And you know, this tag team division and these belts have been all over the flipping place. And you know, in Cream Street, I think your that helmet's may, a little tight today, guys. That may guys. be excited, too. That would Holy be excited cow. Oh, oh, my goodness. Ah, oh, gosh. Ah, oh, now I got to take a shower. You black eye for me. Oh, man. Ah, you know, I got stuntman cooties on me. Oh, man. So what are we calling these guys? Stunt Jack? Is that what we're doing here? That sounds good to me. I think that was one of the names that came across Slack this morning. Ah, oh, jeez. Like I said, my notes are everywhere as we're out here in the wind and the weather changes every five seconds in Welcome Michigan. Welcome to Michigan. Yeah. 
So what happens if you're surrounded on three sides by water? Uh, yeah, that's that's it. so. Well, let's see. Uh, let's see what stunt Jack Bojack and these guys and got Mike, going on here. What started out as a very reluctant pairing has apparently become quite the uh, formidable tag team. Y'all can lay claim to being the rightful tag team champions, but they stole the belts. Possession's nine tenths of the law. We all know that mess. You've beaten Cream Street before. Can you do it again? You know, I remember that one day when I crowned you king. Do you remember that? The knighting ceremony and everything? That was one heck of a night. I'm very proud of you. Why don't you just overturn that ruling ass king? Make him give us our property back. Ooh, if I've learned anything from history, uh, the president probably is a little more important than the king uh, uh, on this um, side. I, of the we bond, have a we'll just, we have a king we'll, that's we'll going to overrule that. a bucket. You know we'll just have to take it back uh, by force, won't we? This is a wrestling show, after all. Give the people what they want, and heck, give me what I want. I want to see. I would like to see Cream Street get get a stuffing. They seem to be teasing. Yeah, but Cream Street Mafia, the real tag team champion. I don't I mean I I said that with some heavy air quotes, cause like it's it's never been more heavily disputed who the tag team champions are. Oh, what are you talking about? Who's carrying the belts? Who keeps winning these matches? You can't take the tag team belts off the tag the team champs when the tag team ain't even there. And that's what got us in this mess. And that's why they're the real champs. We've been down this road before and I don't have the mental capacity to try to have this argument again with you. The fact of the matter is, the only reason they're carrying the belts right now is because they stole them. Green tea and ginkgo caloba. It'll help with the, the mental capacity thing. The disrespect that Stossel gets everywhere he goes is unbelievable. Because Cream Street hasn't had an, on, an ounce of honor in their bodies. And they are some big men. I mean, Cream Street is the baddest tag team in the history of this company. I couldn't agree more, but I think we mean different things. They're bad, all right. Baker, Cruz, you, just as your opponents, can also lay claim to being the tag team champion, seeing as Cruz... You weren't even in the match. You weren't even in the building. That's what I'm saying. Thank you, Joe. Shut up. No, I you. Shut up. You ran away, didn't he? Bojack told you to shut up. To a head I, I don't care. I got my boys over here. What they got my do? back. It's all right. I got the champs behind me. It'd be okay. First of all, I've been called worse by better. I told you you look like a teenage Peter Griffin. I love it. Okay. You know, you look like the kind of guy that'll walk into a buffet and walk out with a pocket full of tater tots. Mm -mm. Some bold talk coming from Nick Baker. So first of all, you want to say that we lost these titles when I wasn't even in the building. That's the problem here. Tell him. Tell him. Roberto Cruz, tell him. You can't take the belts off the champs when they're not even here to defend it. Makes no sense. If we're not your IWE Tag Team Champions, then why are we holding these in our very hands right here? In front of all these terrible, terrible people. Because you grabbed them and made off with them? They are the champs. They weren't rightfully beaten. They're still the champs. And they still have the belts. So it's pretty simple. Pretty, pretty simple. No, to be honest, I don't even know who to introduce as the champions. It's, I mean, it, it's even simpler than Steiner math. I mean, either way, the following contest is a two out of three falls match, and it is for the IWE Tag. Team Championships!
Love those beautiful tag teams. Introducing belts. first, from Los Angeles, California, by way of Bakersfield, Roberto Cruz, Nick Baker, the Cream Street Mafia! Yes, IWE's most dominant tag team. We've talked about how that's a rather, that statement needs an asterisk to follow it. Because they only got there by just uh, uh, literally separating ever, all the other teams in existence for a while. No. Well, when you run the over the competition. Street Barfia! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, King Joe was just reading a sign he saw in the crowd. How do you get? How are you so disrespectful to uh, such a dominant tag team? And their opponents. I, I'm First, a question you should be asking. A man Street. whose credentials are too far above my. Uh, they are. They is ask, They're the ones the asking it. Mighty oh. Bojack. How do they get disrespected like that? I would have said that you should be asking that regarding this team, Stuntman Mike Mighty Bojack. How can Cream Street be so disrespectful to them? And his tag team partner, hailing from the Stuntman Academy of America and weighing in at 200 pounds. He is everyone's favorite stuntman, IWE Hall of Famer, Stuntman Mike! John, a little uh, strategy over there in the corner from Cream Street. I like it. Referee Dan Tanner being assigned to this contest. Last time we saw him, he was under threat of being sent to the unemployment line if he didn't play by the rules and call it down the middle. to see if the same is going to hold true here. I got something you don't have. That style. Play my music. Oh, you guys are killing me. I can't because it's not up. This, it, this cannot be the right music. Oh, this is the right music, and that's why I'm mad that we found it. Because oh. you know what's going to happen here. This is you know, We did this before, and I, I no. No, I'm going to throw up in my mouth again. He's proud of his physique. I, I, he's going to pull something. I think. Whoa, hey now. There might be some charges uh, 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 associated with that. I don't think you can do that. Oh, immediately. Stuntman tags Mighty Bojack in to face off against Roberta Cruz. To which immediately Roberto Cruz elects to tag himself out and bring in Nick Baker. This is a two out of three, best two out of three falls match to determine which of these two teams really are the tag team champions. These tag titles, long in dispute by this point in time. Two heavy hitters in here, baby. Absolutely. Two of the biggest and best that IWE has to offer. I don't have any problem saying that. Ooh. Bojack. Man. I mean, this is going to be Duck just one. Power. Trying to whip Nick Baker. Pulls him back in for the kitchen sink, though. Love it. Love it. Nice tags. This is uh, how a, a real tag team works. One in, one out real quick. Burrow Cruz in, though. Ooh. Bojack ducked the line and is hammering his way through Roberto Cruz. Hunting for gold at the Creamy Center. 
Oh my goodness. That came to me on the fly. I, you know, I, I, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for my. Uh, Don't partner. apologize for me. Um, Roberto Cruz getting rolled up well, here. Rolled up into a pin though by Stump Man Mike, and Cruz was able to get the shoulder up. Sleeper hold applied. Stuntman oh. drops the leg across the chest. I think Nick Baker's got had a point there. I think that might have been a choke. It looked like a sleeper hold for my advantage point. Stuntman having a little fun with Roberto Cruz. May not be the right time for that. But Cruz could stand a little bit of humiliation. After everything he's done, not, not only Stuntman and Bojack. Ooh. Wow! Well, Stuntman Mike in control here, but uh, don't get too cocky now. You're dealing with uh, a bad, bad man here in Roberto Cruz. A bad man who's probably got a headache now. Yeah, well, absolutely. Ooh. Cruz, though, found his footing. Throws that right hand. Ooh, another right hand. That overhand right. Vicious there from uh, Cruz and Stuntman trying to fight back now. Stuntman shows Cruz back toward the corner. Some shots of his own there, Stuntman. Tries to whip. Oh, whips him right into. Uh, that is uh, how a great tag team works. Whipped him right that? into Nick Baker on the on the apron there. And got his knee tag. right into the small of the back. Got uh, Stuntman locked in the corner here, and uh, some quick tags working well together. This is why they're the champs. This, I mean. This Nick Baker now in to hammer away at Stuntman Mike, and Mike might be in some trouble now. Oh, he's in trouble now. I mean, he was in trouble the minute he got in the ring with these boys. He's deep into Cream Street's corner. We were all in trouble the minute he started dancing. Nick Baker, with every stomp into the back, yep. we feel the, the, like a shockwave shaking our table. Oh, it's shaking the whole gazebo here. It's crazy. And uh, putting it to Stuntman Mike, man. IWE's gladiators are nothing to contend with unless you yourself are an IWE contender. It's a low shot to the midsection there from Roberto Cruz. Some are going to think that that's a tad too low, myself included. Dan Tanner lets it go. Roberto Cruz now chops into the corner. Tag in now from Nick Baker. Driving the shoulder into the midsection. Oh, that's a lot of a lot of beef just smashing into the corner there. And Stuntman just crumbling down to all fours as Roberto Cruz is tagged in now. Went for the, went for maybe some kind of a back right, but he scurried across to the corner, did Stuntman. And now Bojack is in. Close line to Nick Baker, does not knock him down. One takes Cruz down. Oh, man. Right out of the ring. I mean, Bojack's trying. Well, yes, indeed. Oh, cuts Bojack. under that close line. Samoan oh, so slam. That is a huge Samoan drop from two big men. From Bojack to Nick and, Baker. And Bojack is just that. He is jacked up. Into a pin now. Oh, but Cruz brings in. Cruz comes in with a chair. That's the end of that match. And or breaks that, it up. That. Dan Tanner calls the DQ. Ladies and gentlemen, the first fall has been awarded to Stuntman Mike and the mighty Bojack. DQ'd. Oh, That's right. That's a disqualification. That's all right. What Stossel's is Stossel doing out here? Hey, you know what? This, it's not going to go down like that. This is now because, you know, I'm Craig Stossel and I have this power. It's now my favorite match. No disqualification. A no DQ on the second fall. That's how you handle business. Thanks for coming. And that's why Stossel is the uh, executive producer here. Sasso makes the second fall of the match a no DQ match, and now the chairs are perfectly legal. It makes a great match for Battlezone TV, right? That's why he's the executive producer. 
It'll be great as soon as one of these guys gets a hold of one of these chairs from Cream Street. But right now, Bojack and Stuntman are getting plastered and pasted. And they're, there's, I guess a second fall is now officially underway. It's now underway. The bell is rung, this and, match is going on. And it's gonna, this fall is gonna end quickly. Look at this. One, two, three. And that's it, second fall for Cream Street. That's how you do it. Cream Street has now tied this. The second this. fall has been awarded to the Cream Street Mafia. Oh, Stossel's Stossel, not done. Stossel wants more now? Stossel's not. See, the executive producer makes great decisions at what makes great TV, and he's got another great stipulation for this next fall, I think. Look at him. It looks like he's got All something right. on his mind. That was great. You know what? It was so great that this next match is going to be a table elimination match. Oh, my goodness. Whoa, that means... Uh, Tables match elimination you style. Get those tables. That means you could have a, a, a two-on-one situation here, potentially. And uh, you already had some chairs, uh, tables. So now, we're, so now they're going to have to start bringing out tables. It's, uh, it's, it's all about the furniture today here on Battlezone TV. And uh, what, what we're now calling Stunt Jack is uh, not doing well. They are not in a good place. To explain. And, and Cream Street Mafia is getting some debauchery set up over there. To explain a table's elimination match, when one competitor goes through a table, they are eliminated from the match, and the match will continue until one entire team has been eliminated in such fashion. The last remaining team will be declared the winner. So yes, you can have a situation here where, it's where two on one, where one person gets thrown through a table and they're out of the match, and it continues two on one. And uh, Stuntman Mike is uh, finally starting to stir here in the corner. Um, we can see a grand total of three tables break with three different people going through it before we have a winner here. Rick. Cream Street going to work right now, setting up a table on the outside. Yeah, they're getting themselves all set up with our uh, makeshift table situation here. I do. IW Rulebook does say that a makeshift table still counts as a table. Absolutely, yep. Anything that kind of applies here. And the fans are starting Suspended to wood. sing. Yeah, the fans are starting to sing here, and 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 uh, they're uh, well. What? Looks, in those the aren't tables. They're getting they're getting some, like we said. Yep. A, a makeshift table is still a table here in this situation when you're out here. And there it is, the smile on Roberto Cruz's face. I love it. I love it. He loves his handiwork. They think they've got the table set. All they got to do is drop these guys through them, and they're good to go. Stuntman and Bojack have not moved much. Stuntman's starting to crawl. Just, Bojack has maybe like rolled a few feet in the ring. Just but now starting to move. Those, I mean, they took a pummeling they with, got, from those chair shots. Yes. I mean, one after another they after another. They were pelted. Another. The fact that Bojack's even up and moving as well as stuff at all. It's even kind of shocked uh, Roberto over there. And uh, yeah, Stossel. Uh-oh, I think Stossel got caught directing traffic. Stossel's going to be the most shocked of the whole group. Oh, no. Stossel thinks he's going to try to pay off Bojack to let him be, to let him back away. Except that there's Stuntman Mike. Oh! Plants. Is that how you treat the executive producer of Battlezone TV? By face planting him? When he's actively trying to cost you your match? Sure, yes. By all means, lay Stossel out. He's not a, a, a competitor. He's not an in-ring competitor. Then why is he in the ring? He was Worst directing place traffic to be. that was going on outside the ring. Worst place to be while there's a match going on. He's the executive producer. He can be wherever he wants. Now, Bojack, Bojack and Stuntman, better watch out. sensing the, sh the sharks surrounding them, Cream Street Mafia taking it to them. A stun gun off the top rope for Bojack. Meanwhile, Stuntman Mike takes a clothesline into the corner and a bulldog from there to Roberto Cruz. I think Stunt Jacks aren't out yet. Ah! Oh. Baker though, returning to what always works. The chair shots to Bojack's back, already beaten back. Unbelievable. 
There is so there, like there is action happening all around the ring. I mean, right I now. can't. Yeah, I can't even keep track of everything. Bojack's down on the side over into the there. Ring. And I'm getting. Oh, okay. So I'm getting word. Our 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 stunt Jack name is not accurate. Okay. So we'll work on that. What what do we got? Oh, jeez. Okay. That was a shorthand somebody wrote in the Slack. All right. Yeah. Look at this. Is funny. That makes sense now. The stunning stuntmen. That makes sense with the music and the dance earlier, right? Oh, yes. It, absolutely it does. Yeah. I, I, honestly, I wish I'd thought of it. I would have been the one getting paid. Um, yeah. Well, there you go. Once Cruise. again, notes everywhere, and we have boards, tables, chairs, and wrestlers everywhere. Cruz yeah. having his way with stuntman Mike over here outside on the wood. Meanwhile, oh, side, a stunner to Nick Baker. Whoa! Oh. Nick Baker has been eliminated. Nick Baker went through a suspended table over on the outside. That was nasty. Nick the way Baker he is out of this match. It is now two on one. I mean, that was and just Cruz a sick thud. Senses it. Oh, Cruz immediately. Now you got the a one on one Bojack situation. Has been eliminated. Senses it. Sends Bojack through an upstanding board in the corner of the ring. This is now one on one. Stuntman, Stuntman Mike. and Roberto Cruz. Wow. And they're just throwing punches. The tag team championships on the line. And it comes down to one on one. Stuntman Mike and Roberto Cruz. Stuntman, Stuntman Mike is doing it again. Stuntman has another layer to display. You got to be kidding me. He didn't need music this time. What is he wearing? Money. Oh, Stuntman no. is money. Uh, oh, stopped his foot. Cruz baited him in. Cruz told him, bring it in. Come on, free shot. And he took it. Went, took it straight to the toes. Cruz now finding himself in a bad way. And what is this? Another wedgie wedge. A wedgie to Roberto Cruz. Stuntman. Oh man, Stuntman! Stunt he's looking all standing up on the top rope. Stuntman's looking at all. He's got his best. Uh, I don't know, Mike Goodman feel going on over here. That's an interesting comparison you would draw there. What? Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Cruise up has bo or had uh, Stuntman up. Oh no! Oh no! And they both go did, through did it. They, did they both go through? They both went through at the same time. Referee's call here. Wait a minute. What what it's, happened? It's going to be on Tanner. He's, he's calling the, the bell. bell. He's calling out. He's got a winner. Finally, we're going to have a winner. Are we? What? No contest. They went to the table at the same time. They went through no together. No contest. Dan Tanner has ruled that because both participants went through the table at the same time, this match is a no contest. Oh, wow. my goodness. So that means the belts stay with the champs. We still don't know who the champs are. That's the entire point of this. It's been such in, in such dispute who the tag team champions are. Holy and the last cow. And Stossel is getting dragged out of here. We don't know where this leaves us with our championships. That I wholeheartedly agree with you on. I, this, this still leaves the tag team championships in more legitimate dispute than ever before. The sun's back in our face again. Yeah, I'm half blind right now. Roberto Cruz, uh, not, sorry, not Cruz. Cruz just went through table with stuntman Mike. I mean, there's bodies everywhere. Bojack there is, is shrapnel everywhere. Going back to his feet. I think we need some help out here. Les, uh... We pick up the debris and the bodies yeah. and try to get things sorted out. This is the end of Battlezone TV. Thank you for joining us in this wild, like, un I can't even describe this ep I, there, this indescribable episode of Battlezone TV. Oh, my goodness. This is crazy. I, I, I don't know where this stands. Hopefully, by the next episode, or hopefully soon, we'll have something figured out with this tag team belt. Our next episode of Battlezone TV has got one heck of a main event, a triple threat. Dog, dog collar, collar match. match, triple threat. Not uh, to mention guitar on a pole match for the Gladiator Championship. Don't miss it. For, for Scrappy, I am Axel Gear. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time.